get my six. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the most amazing homesteading channel on the entire internet and universe that has absolutely nothing to do with homesteading, homesteading off the grid. Now, I'm always telling you to get my six. Today, I'm gonna get your six. Listen, by the way, listen, that's a hawk. I see that hawk, but I'm hearing some crows. There's all kinds of stuff here uh, in this forest behind me. You never know who or what may or may not show up, so always be looking as you're listening to me. Uh, getting my six, of course, but here's how I'm gonna get your six. Listen, this is something I talked about just about a week ago that I'm gonna talk about again, because I don't think people are listening. Uh, I stepped into like the reality of the majority of Americans today for like an hour, and it I was reminded of every reason I left. I mean, most of them. It was terrifying. Uh, okay, so here's here's what's going on. Uh, my beautiful bride, dearly, aka Giggly Girl, uh, is spending the day today with a couple of her friends, a couple of Filipino ladies uh, that have been friends of ours for years, um, friends with the entire families, the husbands, their children, uh, wonderful people, love them. Uh, so they're going up to DC. One of our friends lives up in DC and uh, another friend is from Charlottesville and we live like somewhere in between those two places. So this morning I took dearly to a place where our friend from Charlottesville could pick her up. They're carpooling. They're going up. They're going to spend the day together in D.C. and come back this evening. It's only like two hours from where we are, so it's not that bad. Uh, so, but but we were meeting there at 8 a.m. We, we got there at 8 a.m. So, as you know, this is like part of the morning rush hour. I am pleasantly removed from that, that uh, insanity of the rat race, and, and it's something I've worked on for many, many years. You know, I'm 50 now, and I didn't achieve it until about eh, a dozen to 15 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Um, and when I was in my 20s and in my 30s and trying to get out of the rat race, people were calling me crazy. They're like, you know, and there are several things, several ways I did it. Number one is I've never uh, in incurred overwhelming amounts of debt. I've never been materialistic, thank God. I've never been consumeristic, thank God. Uh, if I don't need it, I don't buy it. If I do need it, typically I'll save the money for it. Um, large purchases, and if the interest rates are extremely low, I will borrow, like I have a mortgage, but I'm locked in for 30 years at 3.15%. It's ridiculously low. You know, that's why I haven't paid my house off yet. I could pay my house off right now, promise. But I get more interest on my savings account than I'm paying on my mortgage. I get like 4.35 from Capital One, not sponsored, but check it out. CapitalOne.com, super high savings rate. And then, of course, dividends on stocks and stuff that I have because I don't have boats and campers and drones and all this and motorcycles. And uh, so anyway, I'm talking about the soul trap here. And I, I stepped into the soul trap this morning, not to participate, but just as a witness when I took my wife to this public place, we met. I'm not gonna give the name of the, of the business because I'm gonna tell you something I saw there that is really disgusting. And that's why I'm saying you better watch this before it's deleted because it'll probably get deleted because of this story I'm gonna tell you, but also because I'm gonna spit some truth, brah, some historical facts that they, as, at least they as far as the system and the American public school systems don't want you to know. Yeah, one of them has to do with slavery. I'm gonna get canceled probably by the time this video is over. So we go to this place. It's one of these like gas stations that also sells food, right? Prepared food, uh, mostly. Well, I don't even wanna say what kind of food, okay? Cause I don't wanna give it away. So we meet up with our friend, you know, we exchange hugs and all this stuff. And let me tell you this, it's like <clears throat> my wife and I dearly, we get out of the truck and we see our friend's car. And uh, so we're waiting by the car and so we see our friend coming out of this store. She's coming over. So we start hugging and kissing and I'm telling her I love her and she's telling me she loves loves me. And a friend comes over and she says, good God, it's only for one day, which means we're only gonna be apart for one day. And I said, well, that's one day too long to me. Um, and it reminded me, and I'm not saying this about my friend because this isn't the case. I know my friend and I know her husband and I know their marriage and I know their relationship. It's good. 
It's great. As a matter of fact, that's why they're our friends. I only like to hang out with like people. If you got a crap marriage, you got a crap... I Listen, hey, I just don't want your negativity coming into my circle of positivity. So I don't hang out with toxic people. I don't hang out with people who are in toxic situations, toxic relationships, because that stuff's contagious, okay? So I'm not saying this about the friend that was making fun of us. And so she was just innocent jesting, you know? But this past winter, when we were in the Philippines, because we spent five months in the Philippines this winter, we wanted to get away from the cold uh, here in North America. So we went to the tropics, had a great time. And there's another advantage of not being in that rat race, not being buried in consumer debt and all that crap. We can go somewhere for like half the year if we want to, to escape the weather or whatever. Um, because we're not enslaved people to creditors and and, and you know, because we're not debtors. But uh, Dearly had been away from me for three days at one point with some of her family. So when she came home, um, there were a couple of ladies with her. So she comes in the door and we just start hugging and kissing and telling each other we missed each, each other. And the one woman that was with her said, my God, it's only been three days. You act like you've been apart for three years. And then I looked at her and I just kind of spoke out, thought out loud. I said, I feel sorry for you. And she says, why? I said, because you clearly don't want to know, don't know what it's like to be so madly in love with someone that even a day is, is a year too long. And I know about her and I know about her husband and I know about their relationship. Let me tell you, it's crap. I don't know why they're still married. I don't. Um, so, you know, when they say you point, when you point the finger at somebody, you got three pointing back at yourself. Her, her statement to us, me and my lovey dovey wife was because she wished she had that. All right. So anyway, there's that. So they leave, they get in our friend's car and they leave. They're heading up to DC. I go into this business establishment, right? I figure, Hey, while I'm here, I may as well order a couple of, uh, you know, breakfast biscuits for me and my kid, right? My son, my teenage son. Uh, so I, I place my order on the kiosk and everything in there is automized or automated. It's like self checkout here, self order here. The only place where people are involved is when you, where you pick up your food, they've got people back there preparing it. And they had one cash register with a cashier. And there was a sign that said for disabled people and, uh, like uh, visually impaired, hearing impaired, and people born before 1980 or something like that. So it's like anybody who couldn't figure out how to use the self-checkout stuff, they got that person. Um, I was like, wow, what the hell? Where am I, you know? Uh, so I ordered the, 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 the biscuits, and then I went into the restroom, right? So I go into the restroom, <clears throat> Here it comes. I mean, trigger warning. I'm getting ready to get gross, okay? So I'm in there <clears throat> doing my thing, and there was somebody in one of the, you know, doing a number two where you have to sit down, okay, in the men's room, so you know what this means. And and I hear his phone ringing, and then I hear this guy answer his phone, and he says, what? And I hear this woman's voice say, we need you. He says, okay. And then I heard him flush, and I'm like, you know, seeing his feet under the thing, I see the pants come up. I see this door open and this guy rushes out of there. Okay. He had done his business, but he just passed the sinks, you know, no, no hand washing, blitzed out of there. And it occurred to me, he was so fast. I barely caught him out of my peripheral vision. It was like a blur. And it occurred to me, he was wearing his clothes just happened to be the same color of the uniforms of the people making the food that I saw behind the counter. And I thought, no, it can't be. So I finished my business. I went to the sink and of course washed my hands. Here's an actual fact for you. If everybody on earth simply washed their hands after using the restroom, either doing a number one or a number two, it would cut down on communicable diseases by 60%. That six out of 10 illnesses would not be in existence if all these dirty people just washed their hands. All right, so I wash my hands, dry them with the blow dryer thing that says we saved 20,000 trees this year by having this thing. Um, so I go back out and I go to the line, this long line, to wait for my, my sandwiches, right, my subs, and boom, 
guess who I see putting the cheese on the sandwiches? It's that guy. Do it. I left and I paid, get this, $17.68 for these two sandwiches and a and a 20 ounce bottle of water. Yeah, you know, somebody told me in the comment section, listen, listen, sheeple, listen. Somebody told me in the comment section that they remembered their father. Now this was a boomer that told me this. It was a woman and if this was you, chime in and say, hey, that was me. She remembers her father saying that the corporations, and this was like 50 years ago, the corporations were so greedy and the people were so stupid and consumeristic that he saw in the future the day coming to where the corporations would bottle up water and sell it to the sheeple, the consumers, because they're so consumeristic, they'll pretty much buy anything that the corporations are greedy enough to put into pretty packaging. And she said in her comment, her dad didn't live long enough to see the day, but here we are. I paid $1.29 for a 20 ounce bottle of water. I was gonna get the 32 ouncer, but it was $2.99. I live on well water here that's not got fluoride in it to make me obey and conform. I know that sounds conspiratorial and I'm not, didn't I say this video was gonna get canceled? Better watch before I'm canceled. Um, I left the, I don't care that the sandwiches, I guess, cost me 15 bucks, seven and a half dollars each. They probably are just full of cancer anyway. You know what I mean? I walked away from that money. I didn't demand a refund because, listen, I know that would have taken an hour and I know the value of my time. And I'm going to tell you the value of my time. It's $500 an hour. Yeah, that's, that's literally how much money I make when I work. I've been doing social media for 15 years. We had, we're at a, we, it, people used to make fun of me because I wanted out of the rat race. Uh, what is it? The average household American income, annual income is something like, 62,000 or something, maybe 48, somewhere between there. I pay more money in taxes. I literally write a check. Well, not really. I do it electronically. But I electronically send the IRS and the state of Virginia's tax department more money than that every year, uh, which is more than the average household earns. And it's only because I exited that rat race and now I have time to actually make money and I do it by something I'm passionate about. I do it by, by following my heart and doing what I love. Um, people that work, they just don't have time to make money because they're too busy working. So I go outside and I just look around, right? It's like 8, 10 a.m. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a rat race. I see a guy putting gas in his car with one hand and using an electric shaver and staring at his reflection in the freaking thing like this. Whew, man, people don't have time to wash their hands after they poo. People don't have time to shave before they leave their house. It's there. And, 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 you know, when we're in the Philippines uh, this winter, a, a question I'm often asked by the people over there is they'll say, you know, Americans have everything. Americans are so rich, yet they're so angry and they seem so miserable and they're batshit crazy. Why? And I have to explain, OK, number one, they're not rich. You think they are in comparison to yourself. Um, but listen. And I tell these Filipinos, your net worth is probably higher than most Americans. And they're like, huh, what's net worth? Okay, net worth is when you take all your assets, be it your stocks, bonds, mutual funds, uh, real estate, any of this stuff, and then you subtract your liabilities, which is car payments, mortgage, uh, remainder of your mortgage, um, credit card debt, consumer debt, personal loan debt, uh, you do the math, and then whatever's left is your net worth. The average American's net worth is actually a negative number until they're 50 years old. Yeah, I used to be a financial planner for eight years. Um, that kind of helped me get out of the rat race as well. By working in an environment where I actually learned about money, and I learned it's not meant to be slaved for, taxed, and then spent. Repeat, slave for the money, tax spend, repeat, uh-uh, no. <clears throat> so uh, I explained to my Filipino friends and family, listen, your net worth is higher than the average Americans because you don't have any debt. And I've said this for years. The only difference financially between poor and middle-class people is that middle-class people have debt and poor people don't. 
Let me tell you, those Filipinos that I know, my friends and my family that are third world poor, sleep better at night than my middle class American friends who seemingly have it all, who seemingly have everything. Because let me tell you, the week those bills are due, and it's like a daily thing with some of these people, some of these consumers, um, they just can't sleep. Even though they're worn out because they're working 60 to, 60 to 80 hours a week just to make enough money to make the bare minimum monthly payments on all that debt. It's driving them nuts. Some of them, I mean, I'm not trying to out people. Some of them are in their 60s, 70s, still have close to 30-year mortgages and still work 60 hours a week because they've just spent their lifetime consuming, consuming, buying, going to debt. Oh, the minimum payment's only this. I can afford that. Yeah, you do that with 30 different consumeristic items and then it's like, whoa, here's this snowball. It's like an avalanche coming down on you. Our friends and family in the Philippines don't have that. Hey, they got to worry about how they're going to eat every day. They figure it out every day, but once their belly's full, they get to kick back and relax and sleep like a baby because they don't have the wolves howling at the door coming after them, you know, these creditors. So then I got in the car, the truck, the gasoline fueled truck. And yes, I do support EVs and hybrids and all that. I encourage all of you to buy one because I need gas for my truck. All right. So, uh, it was about half an hour away to where I went. So it's half an hour back. So that's an hour, right? And I mentioned earlier, I make 500 bucks an hour. Um, and, and you think, God, you must be making a fortune. Well, yeah, I do, but I'll tell you, I only work a few hours a day. And you're probably thinking, wow, just that's still 1500 a day times you know, 45,000 a month. If you're only working three days, three hours a day. Yeah. Well, and now you're probably saying, why don't you work 10 hours a day like us? No, I set myself up in this situation with what I do for a living and the money I make so that I can live. So many people live to work and so few of us work to live. You know what I did yesterday? I got up, I enjoyed my coffee on the hammock on my front porch, looking at my fruit orchard that I planted and my pond and the birds, staring at my beautiful wife who was having coffee, you know, there in a chair on the end of the porch. Then I worked out for almost an hour. I did this hardcore circuit training thing. Then later in the day, after my son got up and he did his schoolwork in two hours, because he's homeschooled, two hours, he gets his work done in less time than he used to spend riding the bus when he went to the public school. I'm telling you, I'm going to get canceled. I'm teaching y'all stuff that the system doesn't want you to know. My kid used to spend three hours a day on the bus because we live 40 minutes from his school and all the start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. It's like riding a jeepney in the Philippines. It's three hours. It's ridiculous. Not sponsored. Check out K12.com. You can do it for free. You can get your kids out of that rat race too. The public schools are training children to become good little worker bees. Good little hamsters to spin that wheel. That's the system. All right. So anyway, he's sleeping in. We're having our coffee. But after he wakes up and he does his schoolwork, we went hiking for an hour. In the middle of that hike, we stopped and fished for two hours. Didn't catch anything. But then we hiked back came home, me and him played football in the field while dearly chatted with some of her friends and watched one of her shows or whatever. Uh, it's like, that's why I don't work more than three hours a day. I don't spend my time working. I spend my time living with the people that matter, the people that are important to me. I was talking to a friend about a year ago, saw her to function, and she was telling me that they had transferred her job to where she could work from home. Um, she was in management and they were finally, COVID woke a lot of people up, you know, people realize like, why are we, why are we paying $15,000 a month just to rent office space in downtown Charlottesville when these eight people in here can work remotely from home? Okay. The good ones, the good ones who are responsible and who can manage their own time, um, so, and, and my friend, this woman, happens to be one of those types of people. So they say, hey, 
work from home. Use your phone, use your laptop. You know, if you want to come in once a week just to say hi, that's fine. But And so she, we, I, I said, look at the time you're going to save on commuting because we're half an hour out of time. town. That's one hour a day, which is five hours a, a week, which is 20 hours a month. I said, you're saving the equivalency of half a works week's half a work week's time in driving. And that number becomes exponential. I mean, I, there's probably people out here that I, I that drive an hour one way. That's two hours a day. That's 10 hours a week. That's 40 hours a month. People are driving to go to that rat race job that doesn't pay them enough to even pay their bills because they've got so many bills because they had to buy the camper that they, they never have the time to use because they're always working to make the payments on the camper. They never use, you know, and they got that jet pack leaf blower that costs 800 bucks that they use once every fall. 40 hours a month driving. You don't get paid for that. That costs gas. I can only imagine the two or 300 or $400 a month you're spending in gas. Wow. So she says to me, she says, yeah, well, you're right. I, I guess I do have all She goes, I have all this time. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I started laughing so hard, I almost fell down. <clears throat> and she's looking at me like, why are you laughing? You're crazy. And she's about my age, 50-ish. And I said, live. She's like, huh? I said, do you know how many hiking trails are within just a few miles of us? Do you have a mountain bike? Do you, do you like to kayak? Do you own a fishing pole? Where are some places you haven't seen? Have you been to George Washington's house up there, Mount Vernon? It's a two and a half hour drive away. And she's looking at me like, like I was insane. It's because for half a century, it's been work, get taxed, spend, repeat. Work, get taxed, spend, re repeat. Slavery, slavery. Listen, modern day slaves are not in chains. They're in debt. They're in debt. And it, it's, it's willfully. It's willfully. Somebody commented on, on a video I made yesterday or the day before. There's a Bigfoot Sasquatch up here. They said, why don't you buy a drone? I actually replied to the comment. And I said, because I'm not stupid with money. I mean, for that drone, uh, whatever. Listen, to each his own. To each his own. But I know somebody that has a drone and all the stuff that goes with it they're into this thing more than a grand they're like fifteen hundred dollars into this drone you know how many shares of british american tobacco stock that'll buy well it's roughly thirty dollars a share so three times fifteen forty five then you do the rest that's 48 shares and they pay a 10 percent dividend yield so on that fifteen hundred dollars you piss away on a drone put it in british american tobacco stock and it's going to pay you a hundred and fifty dollars a year in dividends and i listen to the americans on here why would you buy tobacco stocks with government regulation and, you know, percentage of smokers going down every year? Blah, blah, blah. That's stupid. No, it's not. Because guess what happens when you leave North America and Europe? <clears throat> you know, what, guess what happens when you go to where 80% of the world's population lives, which is third world countries, Asia, Africa. And I know because I live in these places for months out of the year. Everybody's smoking. They smoke. They drink and they do it because it's a simple pleasure, one of the few simple pleasures they can afford. They can't afford the camper and the boat and the drone, but they can afford those cheap cigarettes and that rot gut rum, and they do. Listen, facts. I know I'm going to get canceled, okay? The percentage of people who smoke is going down every year, especially in the U.S., Canada, and established affluent European nations like England. The number of smokers every year is going up. What, what do you mean? What do you, how does that make sense? Listen, <clears throat> there's more people every year. People keep having people, especially in third world countries. Okay, I'm just gonna use my wife's family as an example. She's got 10 siblings. There were 12, but two's passed on. And almost all of them smoke. I bought more cigarettes this winter, because we, we treat the family when we're over there to a degree. We had a Christmas party, a New Year's Eve party. Hey, I was buying, we were buying all the food, buying the booze. And again, this is, we weren't suckered into it. It's something we'd planned to do, something we had budgeted to do, and something we enjoyed doing. This was our way. I hadn't been over there for a number of years. But I bought cigarettes for everybody, constantly buying cigarettes for everybody because they all smoked. And it's like, 
And they're, guess what? Their kids are growing up watching them smoke. So guess what their kids are going to do? Their kids are going to smoke. And they're not regulating these things in these countries like they do here in the West. You know, and it's, again, that's all about taxes. Take your, you know, tax you to death so they can have more money to waste. Um, my goodness, where was I even going with this? Uh, what? Guys, if you're in the rat race, get out. If you have a job that makes you miserable, quit it. If you say, well, I can't afford it. Listen, stop spending money. Make cutbacks. How many subscriptions do you have online? Go to Amazon. I bet you got six or eight. Probably subscribing to Stars, Shutter, all this other stuff. Uh, cut those out. I guarantee you, if you go and you cut off all your subscriptions that you're not using, you're going to save hundreds of dollars a month just from that alone. Okay? All this material crap, stop buying it. When do you have the time to use it anyway? If you're pumping gas with one hand and shaving with the other, or if you're rushing back to prepare food for other people without washing your hands after you poo, when are you going to have time to, to ride not just that one, but maybe those two motorcycles you have? It's insane. Folks, I'll part with this. People, friends know that I used to be a financial planner and they know the way I live. They ask me for financial advice. I always tell them, read these three books, implement it. Number one, The Millionaire Next Door. Next door. Number two, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Actually read Rich Dad, Poor Dad first. And then a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. You can get them on Amazon. I didn't write them, um, but you can buy my books on Amazon too. The link's in the description box below implement it just going out there i was out of my house for an hour and 10 minutes into that insanity and it's almost as if my heart my heart started to go out to the people out there that are living this way but i brought it back in because i know it's my choice and these people called me crazy when i was trying to leave that they're like what you're gonna make videos on youtube people's like, wait you quit you you worked at the post office and you stopped that to make videos on youtube you're stupid uh-uh <laughs> No, I'm not. And, uh, whew. all right. That's my rant for this morning. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I'm probably going to get blasted in the comment section about how, well, it's easy for you to say because blah, blah, blah. Hey, I went hungry. I went without being able to pay bills. I was down and out in the Philippines for six years on an expired visa because I couldn't afford the $75 every two months to keep my visa current because I was working to create what I have now. And let me tell you, after seeing that mess rat race this morning, driving an hour a day, two hours a day to not even make enough money to pay your bills, but by God, you got all that material crap. After going back in that for just an hour and 10 minutes, I will tell you those down and out years in the Philippines were the most formative, most productive, most educational years of my life. And they were absolutely worth it. Go through some hardships for a little while so you can live the dream for eternity. See you for more next time from here at the most awesomest homesteading channel on the internet that has nothing to do with homesteading. Homesteading off the grid.